Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check a new 2 inch FEV racer from Daton, the GT M205. In this video I'm going to go over its features, show you how to set it up and then hand out doors and test it with 2S, 3S and 4S LiPo batteries. Inside the box first of all we can find the quadcopter itself. It doesn't come with any receiver, this is a plug and play quadcopter which means you will have to provide your own receiver. In addition it's available in two versions, I've got the plus frame and it's also available with a Nomad X frame. And on the bottom of the package we can find one set of Dayton stickers, one set of Gemfren 1940 propellers. So even though this is a 2 inch quadcopter they chose to include 1.9 inch propellers. However I'm not going to use these propellers on my test flight, I just got a bunch of Dalprop Cyclone Q2035C propellers so I'm going to test them out in this video. In addition, we're also getting this bag with accessories that contains some zip ties, simple velcro straps, which I'm also not going to use. I'm going to use this velcro strap from RJX. As I mentioned on one of my previous videos, this is my favorite battery strap, so I'm going to use it on this quadcopter. In addition, we're also getting this bag with a buzzer, some extra screws, and also a male XT30 connector. We're also getting the screws for the propellers, this adapter, and also a battery anti-skate sticker. So now let's have a look on the quadcopter itself. First of all, the internal components are pretty much similar to the GTM3. However, there are a couple of differences. First of all, this quadcopter is using the Daton Edge Racing 1104 6000 KV motors, which are rebranded Sunny Sky motors. In addition, they chose to replace the Daton camera, which was included on other versions and now they're using the Runcam Micro Swift. This is a little bit outdated camera but still I think it's better than the Dayton camera. On the bottom of the stack we can find a 20 ampere BLLES ESC. On the center an F4 flight controller which comes pre-flashed with Beta Flight 3.3 and on the top the TBS Unify DVTX. It supports smart audio and has a selectable output strength of up to 800 milliwatt which is a lot for a 2 inch quadcopter. Unlike the GTM3 now it comes on its own board which contains a capacitor which should reduce the noise on your FPV feed and in addition another capacitor is placed on the flight controller. As I mentioned before this is a plug and play quadcopter which means you're going to need to connect your own receiver. They already soldered the S bus plus 5 volts and the ground pads to this connector and if you need to change it to PPM just desolder this pad and connect it to this pad which is next to it. I recommend to be careful when dealing with this board. I had some bad experience on my GTM3 and finally my OSD stopped working so I recommend that you shouldn't mess with the other pads and in general just try to be as careful as you can. On the front of the board we can find this connector for the buzzer so they give you the option to either connect it or not. I recommend that you should connect it because in case the quadcopter is going to crash in the grass this little buzzer might save you of course if the battery is going to be connected. And moving on to the battery connector you can find the XT30 connector on the back. I recommend to secure the battery lead to the side of the quadcopter using a zip tie because it's going to prevent the battery pads from being ripped off in case of the crash. And also as you can see unlike the GTM3 which had the coin sensor next to the XT30 connector now it's built into the board. Now as you can see the GTM205 is using a unibody plate which means if you're going to break an arm you're going to need to replace the entire bottom plate. Dayton do sell this bottom plate separately it costs about $11 but I don't think it's going to break that easily. The thickness of the bottom plate is about 3 millimeters, and it looks pretty solid. So the next thing I'm going to do is to connect an FR Sky RXSR receiver, then I'm going to go over beta flight settings and head out those and test it with 2S, 3S and 4S LiPo batteries. I hope you enjoyed the rest of this video and I'll see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion.
So overall, what I can tell you about the GTM 205 is that even though I normally like products from Dayton, I'm not a big fan of this one from a couple of reasons. First of all, it has a lot of maneuverability issues. I'm not sure if it's connected to the plus design or the tuning or maybe both, but I just couldn't get into tight places and normally it ended in a crash. In addition, you can see I put this tape on the side of the quadcopter because these boards are just not well protected. You can see that they are sticking from the side of the frame. So if you're going to crush it, you might damage the side of the boards. I highly recommend to put some protection at least on this part because all the wires are exposed here. And on one of my first crash, one of the wires just got disconnected and I had to solder it. So I think that adding some protections to the side is mandatory or maybe that end should just extend the width of the side plates in order to make sure the internal components are going to be better protected. Besides these issues, I think that the VTX performed pretty well. As I mentioned before, 800 milliwatt is an overkill for a 2-inch quadcopter and it can settle for much less than that. The thing about 2-inch quadcopters is that they kind of fall in between. They are not range quadcopters and these are not nano quadcopters. So I think it's a better choice in general to go for a 2.5-inch quadcopter. And that's the reason I ordered from Dayton the 2.5-inch version and I'm going to replace it on one of my next videos. I'm also going to try to adjust the tuning and hopefully it's going to perform better. In terms of flight time, you can expect about 4 minutes of flight time using 450 mAh lipo batteries and out of these 3, I think that the 3S battery performed the best. In addition, please pay attention that on beta flight settings, you will have to update the voltage scale to 106. Initially it was set to 108, which is not the correct value and then the voltage is not going to be displayed correctly. It actually caused me to crash the quadcopter on one of my first times because these are not new batteries and I think on the 3S battery, the voltage just dropped and I crashed the quadcopter because of that, because the voltage reading was misleading. So just updated it to 106 and it should be good to go. So as always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and find it useful. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.